Chance to Counting 6, Investment in Common Stock. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, our email, and our phone number. And this text was taken from the Advanced Accounting publication by McGraw-Hill. We've talked about common investment in common stock as an asset. But the accounting for that investment depends upon how much control the investor in the first bullet point has over the quote investee and that is the stock issuer, the company that you're buying the stock from. They issued stock and now an investor is buying it. It breaks that into three bullet points below. The cost method is used when <coughs> excuse me, the ownership is twenty five percent, twenty percent or less, and the subtext there in italics is the influence is not significant. So we treat the investment at cost just like we treat any other asset we buy at cost. The ownership's between 20 and 50 percent. We say that the issuer has significant ownership and we use the equity method which we'll see on the slide. The slides as well. The third method, if you own over 50 percent stock ownership, it's considered a consolidation accounting method and we've covered that in our consolidation video. Consolidation 1 and others are out on the web already. So let's talk about the cost method. When we purchase the investment, just like any other asset, we record an asset by debiting investment in common stock for the full cost of that stock. And I'm going to get rid of a comment there I don't need. When the issuer declares a dividend, we recognize income on that dividend, just like we would any other investment. But then we have a liquidating dividend, and that is when a company pays a dividend in excess of earnings. If you remember your financial accounting, dividends are paid out of available earnings, and we either keep earnings as retained earnings or pay them as a dividend. Those are the two places that our earnings go. If we pay a dividend that is more than our earnings, we're actually returning capital to investors. When we return capital, you'll see in the last bullet point, we reduce the investment account. So let's look at the journal entries related to the cost method. We're going to say Levi's Jeans acquires 15% ownership of Hollywood Jeans. First of all, we have an entry to record the purchase of the stock. We recognize an investment account, which is an asset by debiting. We have cash going out the door. Crediting, that's how we recognize the investment. Pretty basic. When Hollywood Jeans declares and pays a stock dividend, we have dividend income and we have cash. I'm going to reverse those real quick. Cash and dividend income to recognize the cash that came in the door and the income from the investment in Hollywood Jeans. Now what about the liquidating dividend? By definition, you'll see in brown here, Hollywood pays dividend in excess of their earnings. And we're going to look at the dividends and the income since we acquired the stock. And if the dividends paid is more than their earnings, that's going to be a liquidating dividend. We're going to get cash in the door as an investor, Levi, in my example, $2,000. We're going to reduce our investment, our asset, because the rationale here at the bottom. Once all the earnings are paid, any extra payments must be repayment of the original investment, or a better word, return on. I'll just leave it as repayment on original investment. The text mentions stock dividends and splits. We've already seen that and covered it in intermediate accounting 19 and 20. So at the bottom here, what happens when we sell the investment? Let's assume that we sell it for $42,000 cash. Our new investment in Hollywood Jeans is going to be the original $40,000 purchase less the $2,000 repayment of principal, repayment of investment for a total of $38,000. You'll see that these are linked. $40,000 less the $2,000. And the difference between the cash we get and the asset that we sell is going to be a gain. What about the equity method? 
with the equity method, the investment is going to get adjusted along the way. And it's going to be adjusted by the share of the profits and losses based on our percentage ownership. When a dividend is declared, it's going to be a return, considered a return of principal also. And again, the reason we treat the investment this way is it's assumed that we have significant influence. When the company has net income, we record income and increase the investment. When they have a loss, we record the loss and decrease the investment. So let's look at the journal entries for the equity method. Levi's acquires 35% ownership of Hollywood Jeans, which you see in blue. Same entry on the acquisition. We have record an asset by debiting. We pay cash by crediting. Same basic entry. However, when Hollywood has net income, we're going to increase the investment and credit income because with significant influence we share in the profit and loss. If on the other hand Hollywood rec had a loss, we would debit to recognize a loss and we would reduce by crediting our investment in Hollywood Gene. When Hollywood declares a dividend, we get cash in the door, 300, and we reduce our investment by 300. The rationale being, since we've already recognized the income and loss, any payment is considered return of capital. So then as we do at the end of any period, we need to recognize and account for the carrying amount of the asset. So what would it be after all these adjustments? If I highlight on the cell, we'll see that it's the purchase price we add the net income we recognize, we subtract the losses that we recognize, and we also subtract from the investment the dividends that were declared, and we come up with a new carrying amount. That's the end of Advanced Accounting 6. To find our essential topics courses, which are complete one-hour courses taught in one-hour blocks, you can go out and find that. Um, commented on on our website. We use gotomeeting.com to teach the one-hour classes, which are more comprehensive. Here's our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word, where you'll find all of our videos. If you'd like to register for individual tutoring or live chat sessions on a one-on-one -on -one basis and also in small groups, you can go to our website, you can email, or you can call. Thanks so much for listening, and we will see you next time.